That was a defining moment for me when I saw Sweeney Todd at the Civic Light Opera in Pittsburgh. I was probably 11 years old and I remember I, I was at a dress rehearsal and I was by myself on the front row of the mezzanine and the opening chords of that musical started. And this was a very traditional production. The opening chords, uh, just the organ chords and then this whistle, this piercing uh, whistle comes out of those chords and into the Ballad of Sweeney Todd. And I have never, I don't even think to this day, been so scared by something, so startled and so shivered to the core by an experience. It really shifted something in me. Everybody told me to move to Los Angeles. I didn't want to live there at all, at all. But um, there, were, there were definitely mitigating factors like I could look at the landscape of theater in New York and look at the landscape of what was happening on Broadway when I got out of college and so many theaters were populated with actors that were on hiatus from their television shows or between films coming back to New York to do plays and there was just such an overwhelming tide toward Los Angeles for me personally that I, I, I thought well let me try it out let me go and, and try to build something there. So cut from the coming out of school idealistic version of myself that was so formed by this immersive and insular experience of a conservatory acting program to then almost eight years later in LA kind of having been knocked about and made some progress but not really having felt like I was anywhere that I could build on in terms of my trajectory. Uh, I was considering really seriously considering packing it in, but I just didn't know what else I would do. I think if I could have thought at that time in 2006 of another career path, I probably would have diverted and taken it. Um, I was super depressed. Uh, I had grown a beard. I really looked like Mandy Patinkin. And I love Mandy Patinkin, by the way. That wasn't a dig. Um, I went in for this audition, and I think because I was in such a place that was dark, actually, that it there was some authenticity to my connection to this very dark character. And then everything changed because I got that job. They made me shave and then come for a call back and then they gave it to me. I was a part of something that had already formed. I came into Heroes on the eighth episode and it was already a global phenomenon. And, and, and the way that the season was structured, it was so much uh, anticipation about this particular character that I played. So I just stepped into something that took me and you know, opened up whole new levels of experience that I had only ever dreamed of before that. For me in film and television, I tend to rely much more on instinct and um, sometimes being overly prepared can be detrimental to the impulsive nature of choices that you make in front of a camera because it's a different, you're, you're looking to capture something different. Whereas on stage, it's about crafting something, it's about shaping something and that takes time. The first play I did in New York was Angels in America. I had never done a play here before. It was very important to me that it was an ensemble piece off Broadway, that it wasn't about me coming in from Hollywood and you know throwing my name up above the marquee to see if it sells tickets. And, and it wasn't about that. It's about cultivating an experience that's worth seeing, that an audience wants to see because there's some grain of integrity in it, not because it's trying to be something. I mean, I can't, I can't play a character unless I can love the character. And I've played some pretty despicable characters. So for me, characters that require me to explore different psychological landscapes and understand them in a way that I wouldn't if I was just living my regular life appeal to me. And I've had the good fortune of playing a number of those irreprehensible people that, you know, do abominable things but that I still have to love. That's an interesting challenge.